Hi everyone! Hi! I'm Coach Jen from Code Speak Labs and this is... Nexa! Yeah! And today we're going to program a button, button. in Scratch. So if you notice a lot of times in video games you have a starting screen and then you have to actually click on a button to start the game. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. The first thing we'll want to do is actually make our button. So we don't need this cat here. So we're going to go ahead and delete it by pressing the trash can. Now we're going to add a button. You can design your own button using the paint tools. Scratch very conveniently also has its own buttons here. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose button two. Now there's my awesome button two. When I click costumes here on the top left, you can actually see there are already two costumes, costumes for button. You have a blue button and we have an orange button. Okay, so let's go ahead and start adding some code to our button. Um, often we start our games with what block again, Maxwell? The green flag click. Is when, it, is, it is in event. Yes, so when green flag clicked under events. So we want to figure out what position for the button is best. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up my button. I'm going to put it right about here. That will automatically update the X, Y coordinates here for go to X, Y, so that every time when the green flag is clicked, it'll start here. Now I'm gonna use a forever loop because I wanted the button to be responding this way forever. Max, where do I find forever loops? Go to control. Control, so that's this kind of dark, orange color and you'll notice there's lots of different options and the forever loop the forever loop is under the wait one second and the repeat 10. exactly so it's the third block over here here's forever uh -huh. then we're gonna have a conditional block the if else so you'll notice there's more than one if block the if else block has two mouths. So it's like a double mouth alligator. And it also looks like an E. Yeah, it kind of looks like the letter E. That's a great point, Maxwell. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to say if our button is touching the mouse pointer. Um, you go to sensing to find that block, and it looks like a hexagon. It does. You'll this notice touching, touching mouse, mouse pointer. It's a hexagon, so there's six sides, and there's, whoa, look, a six-sided hexagon gap over there to fill. So now it says, if touching mouse pointer, then, so then we're going to switch costumes. So it's really up to you what color you want to start with and what you want it to end with. I'm now going to go into looks and I'm going to say switch costume to the first option. Then I'm going to put it on this next option. Whenever there's a little drop down indicator, that means you get to choose something. And switch the top one inside the if inside the top mouse to button to B. And then put, and then the switch costume to in, inside the second mouse, switch it to button to A. Make sure it's not button to B, button to A. So you'll notice now when I press my green flag, it's already in the right position. But when I move my mouse pointer, what happens, Maxwell? It turns orange. Woohoo! And if you want, you can always go to costumes. And you can actually use the paint tools to change the color of the button. But I really like um, the blue and orange, so I'm going to keep it the same for now. 
I might though write, <laughs> should we write some text on it, Maxwell? What should we write? Maybe write click me. Click me. Because, because we're making a button, so we're gonna, so we're soon gonna make code that that makes it so when some so when you click it something happens so maybe you should write click me click me okay and i'm just going to change the color of my font here click me so you can write play you can write go you can write anything you want I'm writing click me. Okay. So, so that's real pretty. It's cool. But it doesn't actually do anything yet. So how do we make it do something? Okay. So let's put a new event. Maxwell, what new event do you think we should do? Maybe, maybe do when this sprite clicks. When this sprite clicks. Because then, it, because it's a button, right? When you click on it, it should do something. It's true. So when this sprite clicked, we're going to, let's do a broadcast message. Maxwell, can you explain what is a broadcast message? Broadcast, you stay in events, actually. Mm -hmm. It's still an event. So it's, it's, uh, it's saying broadcast, and then the drop down the drop down circle should say message one and then if you click on the drop down triangle then um a a a a, a bar should pop up you should you should see only new message and message one click mm. on, and, and there should be a check next to message one click new message Great. Okay, so let's call our um, new message start. How about that? Okay. So we're going to make now a special backdrop that comes up when we start. Hmm, what backdrop should we do? Do you have any ideas, Maxwell? Maybe, maybe, um, I sometimes like, uh, go up. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like blue sky. Blue sky. Ooh, that's a pretty one. Blue sky. Okay. So this is, this might be tricky if you're new to Scratch. So right now, all my code is on this right over here button. If I go ahead and click backdrops, that's how I add code to my backdrop. Um, also, on the backdrop tab, it, you should see the, the, the pi a, a picture of the current backdrops, of the current backdrop above the word backdrop. And That's under true. the word backdrops, you should see the number two. Mm -hmm. So right now, my backdrop one is nothing here, and then it becomes blue sky. So if I want to put in some code... I can decide. Again, if I want to start my game off, I have when green flag clicked. Also, in your backdrop, if you go to motion, um, there should be a text saying, um, motion, stage selected, no motion. That's true. Because stages can't really move. Stages. Right? Because it fills up the whole thing. Where can it move? Exactly. So you notice, so you're definitely on the coding part for the backdrops if the motion is category is empty. So we actually want looks. So so when green flag click, do we, so Max, what do you think? Should we start on blue sky and then switch to something else? Or should we start on something else and then switch to, to blue sky? Maybe I'm starting to be on some moves. Okay. Okay. So let's decide. Okay. Let's say we don't want the blue sky to show up until I receive start. So let's say this is a game where once you see the blue sky, that means you're starting. Maybe what should we do for our backdrop then? Let's, let's do, we're going to add another backdrop. That's just kind of our, our um, beginning of our 
screen. So I'm going to choose blue sky too. So it's kind of the plain one. And we'll have it switch to the more interesting blue sky too after we win. Okay. So let's go again to switch backdrop. Okay. So when I press my green flag, I have this plain screen. It says, click me. I go over my button and I click it and it takes me to this awesome scene. So if you're coding a game, you'll probably want to then hide this button after you click on it. It's up to you. You can also have it display different text when you're hovering over it, or you can have it continue saying, click me. It's really up to you. It's your game. And you'll notice whenever you reset again, you just press that green flag and can click it again. So Maxwell, let's go ahead and check out your game now. Hi. So this is Maxwell's project. So let's see what happens when you press the green flag. <laughs> There's your... And I and I put the text on it. I change it to Super Go. Super Go. So we, we hover over, it changes color, and then I click on it. You get to the new backdrop. I like how it hides when the sprite is clicked. It looks <laughs> really good. Um, let's see another example project. So here's another example where there's a blank screen at first when you press the green flag and then when you press forest and then you press ocean so the sounds are different every time. And lastly city. So there's a lot you can do with buttons. Maxwell, we finished coding our button in Scratch. Wow. So I think it means that it's time to cue the virtual applause. Did you have fun, Maxwell? Yes! Yeah. And we hope you did too. If you want to watch more videos, subscribe here or go ahead and take a class with us. Check it out at codespeaklabs.com. <laughs>